up, YouTube? This is Rebecca the Diva coming at you with another video. But before we get into this video, if you're new, hey, welcome to my channel. Go right on ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family. Hit the notification bell and please select all. Therefore, every time I upload, if YouTube is not bugging and tripping, tripping and bugging, you'll get notified when I do upload. Hit the share button because, hey, there are no secrets on this channel and sharing is caring. Hit that like button because you already gonna like me, so you might as well go ahead and warn before the video starts. Hit the like button. And for everybody else, welcome back, Diva Gang. Hit that like button. And also, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love and support that you show me. Thank you to the new subscribers. Thank you for joining our family here. Um, I'm on the road to 2K, and I do appreciate anybody that subscribed to the channel anybody who watches my videos interact in the comment section you guys are just awesome because without you guys i wouldn't be me um i'm gonna get jump right into this video um because my baby girl will be home in about 20 minutes my son has band practice so he won't be home till like 6 30 ish um i'm not cooking today because i've cooked all weekend <laughs> um so yeah, I'm not cooking it down. I'll probably either I know I, I got a taste for pizza. That's what I want. So me and baby girl will probably get pizza and I'll probably get McDonald's or something, like some fries or something for my son. But this video, as you can tell by the title, is my experience meeting a celebrity. And this happened a long time ago. When I tell you long time ago, I'm talking 1989, 1990, 91, around there. Okay, and it's 2021 now, so it's about 20 years ago. We're going to go 20 years back. 91. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> Almost 30 years ago. Okay, just to show you how old I am. So I'm going to start by saying that I graduated from high school in 89, January 89. I took my GED, passed it, had a graduation ceremony, and entered into community college. So, while going to community college, I decided I need a job. My first ever job, okay? Ooh, I hate people do that. So, I'm going on with my website. So, my first ever, ever job, okay, was <laughs> McDonald's. And I only worked there, I probably want to say, for an hour, if even that. I got hired because back in the day there was no computer, there was no internet to sit down and if we did have the internet back then it was very freshly new and I didn't have it at my house, okay? So the way you go to apply for a job was you go from store to store or place to place or to a temporary agency, labor pool, whatever have you. And you apply that way. So I went walking downtown Brooklyn. And this girl who used to go to my high school was like, oh, you can go to McDonald's, Burger King. They'll hire you right on the spot. Just like they do now. They hire you right on the spot. Anybody, and I'm going to say this, you know, so anybody looking for a job and you just need a job job, go check out these fast food restaurants. I can't speak for no other state. But I know here in Florida where I live, the McDonald's up the street is starting off with like $15 an hour. And even if you guarantee me 20 hours out the week, that will be some good money, you know, just to put in your pocket or help pay a bill or two, you know, especially if you don't have any experience doing anything else. Me personally, I have experience as a medical assistant, so I wouldn't get a job working at McDonald's. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do work and everything else on top of that. Mm. So, um, so my first job ever was working at McDonald's. So I went in, I did the interview, they tell me to come back, they'll give me the uniform. So I came back the next day, they gave me the uniform, I go in the bathroom, put the uniform on, I come back out, and the manager looks at me, and then was like, what you here for? I was like, the shift manager told me to start today. 
She was like, oh, man, I don't know why they be telling people to come. So we ain't got nothing for you to do here, baby, today. You can come back tomorrow. And I was like, but I was told to come back today. I spent, you know, train fare. And I'm like, I live, you know, kind of far. It took me two trains and a bus to get here. So I'm here now. So I was like, okay. She said, well, hold up. And then she goes in the back. She comes back out. She hands me this big-ass mop. Mind you, y'all, I'm short. I'm like 210 pounds, five foot one today. Back then, I was about maybe 140 pounds, and I damn sure wasn't no five foot, five foot one. I was probably like 4'11". I was a short, itty bitty little girl. I'm 18 at the time. I looked at this heavy ass mop, and it was way bigger than me. I was like, oh no, see, you know what? Let me go change my clothes. Y'all can keep your uniform. I'm not doing this. And the lady just shook her head and walked away. I changed my clothes, gave them back their uniform. And I was so pissed off. Because I was like, I specifically told them that I only wanted to do cashier work. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to clean. I wasn't doing it. Sorry. Aunt wrong answer. So anyways, from then on I'm walking and walking from store to store. asking people are they hiring. So I got lucky. And it was this children's clothing store by the name of Cookies. They're still up to, I think they're still up and running today. Downtown Brooklyn on Fulton Street. So the man hired me on the spot. He said, you can start right now if you want to. Gave me the paperwork, filled out the paperwork. Only thing is, I didn't have my social security card with me. He said, just bring that tomorrow and you'll get paid every week. Back then, all jobs were minimum wage. And I think it started off with $3.85. So I worked there for a good little while. I worked at Cookies for about a year. So from 89 till about the summer of 90, I was working there. And I stopped. No, I didn't stop work. I got laid off because um, they changed managers. So they laid a lot of us black girls off and kept the Spanish girls and the white girls. And this store was owned by like Middle Eastern people. I think the owner was like some turkey. So I was like, it's fine or whatever, because I was getting ready to start to the university. I had a full ride scholarship to Long Island University Brooklyn campus on track team. So it was like, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to work, go to school, keep up with my full, because I had to take 12 credits, which was like four classes, and be on the track team, you know, show up at track meets, go to practice. So, yeah, everything was going to be kind of a tight schedule. So, my parents was like, God, I don't think you need to be working. So, the fall came. I started school. And then I needed some extra money for the holiday time. So, my parents agreed to let me find a job. And I was like, well, let me just go to a temporary agency because I can get a job, you know, because all of my classes were basically in the evening time because I don't, I don't do morning classes. Even now, if I enroll in school, which I'm going to be rolling for the fall semester, probably either today or tomorrow for my nursing, if I enroll in school, I, I, I don't do early morning class. I'm fucking not getting up in no 7, 8, 9 o'clock for no class, like 11 o'clock and later. So I was like, well, I can just take my classes at night and get a job and work a few hours during the day. So I went to Manhattan, I found a temporary agency, and like within the next day, they had called me back and was like, hey, um, we got this position for you, it's just basic simple work, stuffing envelopes at for an insurance company. I was like, sure. So I worked like five days a week for three weeks, and she had called me and was like, oh, we're gonna need you to come into the office today. So I was like, hold oh, on, did I do something wrong? Nope. She was like, you're doing such a great job. Well, we, we found a better position for you. It's working here in the city. It is a part-time position. You can work three days a week, um, eight hours a day, doing as an um, executive assistant. So I was like, okay. And I wasn't too sure because I was like, okay, what all do I have to do? Because I don't have that much experience. So basically, I was going to be working. I'm basically, I was basically the assistant to the assistant to the head guy. So basically, whatever the main executive assistant told me to do, I was going to do it. 
So I was like, okay, I can do that. And it was starting, and she told me, no, this is going to be starting at six fifty an hour. I was like, well, really? She was like, yes, because it's part-time. If you was going to go in full-time, then you would get benefits, and you would get this, that, and the third. But you're only part-time, and you're in school, too. So, yeah, I'm for sure six fifty will be enough for you. And I was like, yeah. Okay, back then I didn't know no better, because had somebody say that to me today, I'd probably slap them. <laughs> um, so... She says, well, you can start, and it was like a Wednesday or a Thursday. She said, you can start next week. And she gave me the address to the company. She told me who to report to. And I get outside the office door, and I'm looking at the information. It was Sony Music. I was like, oh, Sony Music. I was fucking excited. I think I told every family member, every friend, I'm going to be working at Sony Music. I'm going to be working at Sony Music. So I was already having plans. I'm going to be a producer. I'm going to do this. I had all kind of fucking pipe dreams. So I reported to work. And the job was easy. The only thing the girl. Because it was a black girl. The executive assistant. She was a black girl. She was really fucking cool. Cool as fucking fuck. Like when I tell you this bitch was cool. This bitch was cool. Like this bitch bring, would bring me to her fucking house. She was down in Long Island. Now for all of us new NYC5 borough people. Long Island was the shit back then. If you lived in Long Island or you had family members that lived in fucking Long Island or you had friends that lived in Long Island, they had money. So she would bring me to her house. She's like, come on, let's go to lunch. And then we get on the train. And she said, why are we getting on the train? She said, well, I gotta go home for a minute. She said, don't worry. We'll come back. They ain't gonna miss us. And we would go all the way to Long Island on the LIRR train and go to her house, chill. And she'd have her housekeeper drive us back to the city. I used to love this girl. She was my she she was my girl for real, for real. Like me and her were close, close. Like you see her, you see me, you see me, you see her. We would go out to the club together. She was because I was young, wasn't twenty one yet. But well, she would get me into the clubs. Like I had a child. I had the time of my life. So I'm working there, and this is like three, four months into the job, okay? And I, I'm working my ass off, okay? Because mind you, I'm still part-time there. I got to keep up with being on the track team, keep up with practice, keep up with my studies, because if not, my parents would kill me. So I had to keep up with all of this shit, but, and I was making money, money. Like, the money was good, 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 along with the money that I was getting from school, I was balling. And I was on my father's American Express card. So I had swipe, swipe, unlimited swipes. And he wouldn't say nothing. He was just like, oh, you're spending too much. And he paid the bill to keep pushing. So, yes, I was a spoiled girl. Still spoiled. <coughs> so, one day I decided, now working for this company, oh, my God, the perks. There was a break room with... In the morning time, you can go and you can get cookies, bagels, bialis, just everything that was there, it was free. You didn't have to pay for it. Juice, coffee, water, soda, whatever you whatever you wanted, it was there. Now, I didn't too much eat any of their breakfast foods because before I got on the train to come to work, I would stop off at the corner store and get me a bagel um, with cream cheese and a hot, a hot chocolate because I didn't drink coffee back then. And, um, so, everything you wanted. Then lunchtime, there was another room full of just all kinds of food. Or you could go downstairs to the, um, the cafe and they'll make, the chef can make you whatever you wanted. Working at Sony back then was amazing. So, I can imagine in the 21st century, working there has to be wow. You know what I'm saying? So, I just love that job. And if you wanted to go out, they would, um give you like little vouchers or something little things that you can take to certain restaurants and the restaurants would take it so every no so often i would go out because i was going to run to the store to grab a shirt or a blouse or something on my lunch break if i wasn't going with the um my my boss that i was working with so this one day and it was in the winter time it was cold as fuck i needed to go get some boots um because we was going out to the club that weekend at school so, I needed to get some boots. So I went out to get my boots. And I was like hustling. Because I was like, let me hurry up. I don't want to be late. I don't want to get in trouble. So, I'm getting back. And there's like a crowd of people standing in front of the door. Okay. And I think this was like, I want to say like 
Fifth Avenue, 57th Street. I'm not too sure the address. I can't remember that. So I was like, who is that? Who is that? And everybody was just surrounded around this person. And then when everybody moved, I walked, because I, I had my badge, my ID. So I was like, well, I need to get in. I don't got time for all of this. I need to get in. Same attitude you see me with today. The same attitude I always have. And I, and, I, and, I, and I turned around to see who it was. And I was like, oh, my God, you're Mariah Carey. She was like, yes, I am. I said, oh, my God. I said, can I have a hug? She was like, sure. And she just gave me a hug. She says, okay, I got to go now. It is freezing out here. She was like, thank you for all the love and support. And she got into her fucking limo and jetted off. And I was like, ah, because working at Sony Music, like, you would see artists, but these were not big people that have been on TV. Like, these are nobody. The, the section that I worked at, which was basically, like, called the C-suite, where, like, the A&R people were at, you would see people that were signed, but you didn't really know who the hell they were or they were white artists whom I wasn't familiar with I mean now Sony Music and I worked for one of their um record label because Sony Music is the umbrella the entity and then you have the little ones that are under them so I worked for Columbia Records you know which that's where uh, Mariah was signed to. So, and at the time, the guy who was like the top guy of Columbia Records was Tommy Matola, who Mariah eventually went on to marry and divorced. And I think he, I think he's, yeah, I think he died like years ago. But that was like the area. So I didn't really know what artist was who. You would see them, but you wouldn't really see them, and then you would see them, and if you knew them, you knew them, if you didn't know them, you didn't know them, you know. So I was so strong. I was like on cloud 9, 10, and 11 the whole rest of the day. I told literally everybody that I knew that I met Mariah Carey in person, and she hugged me. Like, I was floating on air, and I loved that job. Unfortunately, like about two, three months later, I had to quit. Because my um, track team, we were going out of town a lot, you know, a lot, a lot, doing doing a lot of track meets. So, of course, like, track was my, 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 my passion. I had to give up that job because I did not want a job in music at all. So, you know, my dream was to go to the Olympics. Um, that's a whole other story in itself. But so I quit because of the track team. I wanted to be more active on the track team because I was one of the more... more star um athletes there but yes that was my experience meeting mariah carey like back then she was with her freshman album so the album had just dropped she got all of this fame overnight and she was like she was the shit you know she was the big shit back then and um she was humble back then very humble girl now the horror stories that you hear about her now, because she's a diva, you know, self-proclaimed diva, you know, I'll put it this way, money has a way of changing people, <laughs> especially in the industry, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my little back in the day story, I just thought I'd share that with y'all, because I needed to bring y'all some more content, because I didn't really record it all last week, um, reaction video was coming next i gotta get up to speed on everything and then i will be doing a reaction video so until next time guys bye